in a recap of events having to do with Hulk Hogan allegedly relieving a brand ambassador due to their race. Ringside News wrote that Hulk Hogan has faced numerous accusations in the past with racism topping the list. A woman aspiring to be a social media influencer recently saw her dreams dashed when Hulkster allegedly crushed her hopes of becoming a brand ambassador. She claims going public about it led to her being blackballed. As since Janai, the influencer used TikTok to reveal that Hogan hired her as an ambassador for his real American beer, but fired her the next day upon discovering she is black. Since making this accusation public, Janai says work opportunities have dried up for her. In response to the allegation from Janai, a spokesperson for the brand said, We are deeply troubled by the false rumor circulating on social media that a brand ambassador hired by a third-party marketing agency was terminated by Hulk Hogan for racial reasons. Real American Beer simply terminated its short-term relationship with the third-party marketing agency. Hulk Hogan was not involved in that decision, and race was not a factor. We are in communication with the agency in an attempt to clear the misunderstanding and incorrect information and believe that this false statement will be withdrawn. The accuser has now said this in a clip on TikTok. Hey guys, I just want to start by saying thank you for the overwhelming amount of support that I received over my most recent viral video regarding the cancellation of my contract for Hulk Hogan's Real American Beer. I was hired by an agency better known as BrandAmbassadors.com and for those who have been asking, I have yet to receive any justification as to why my contract was even canceled. Unfortunately, after everything happened in full transparency, I have yet to be booked by another brand. And I truly believe that it's due to this situation. I was contracted to promote Real American Beer for the first week of July, starting on the 2nd and ending on the 6th. But after my first day of work on the 2nd, my contract was abruptly canceled with no reason as to why. Which is so weird because I later discovered that the events were not canceled and I was actually replaced by a whole new group of brand ambassadors. Now, this is the first time that I have ever experienced such treatment in this industry, and I just want to know why. Why was my contract canceled? Now, this situation is very unfortunate, but I believe that it highlights a broader issue here with minority influencers, content creators, and brand ambassadors all across the world. We often encounter disparities in our pay, recognition for our contribution, and what is the reasoning as to why? Lack of communication and fairness in this instance is a huge reminder of the challenges that we continue to face in this industry. And for those who have sent kind messages and responses to my previous video, I appreciate the overwhelming support during this time. Since this incident, I have realized that it is my purpose to be an advocate for minority influencers, content creators, and brand ambassadors all across the world. This situation will not be swept under the rug, and my statement will not be withdrawn. We need answers. Why was my contract canceled, Hawk Hogan? Why was my contract canceled, Real American Beer? Why was my contract canceled, BrandAmbassadors.com? It's a like, there's a it's a ridiculous thing, right? Like, hey, I didn't get the job. It's because I'm like I'm black, right? That's the only reason. I was telling this that to my friend yesterday, like you know, uh, on a weekly, bi-weekly, like three hours walking around shopping um, yesterday, and he said, said, you know, what would be really funny if the person that they um, that took, you know, that they hired to replace her was actually black. And, and like, but the weird thing about this is like, it's just to using, just because just because you got hired to do a job, it's not a guarantee because there's other people go for the job as well. I mean, I've, it's like these like young 20 year olds have no idea what it's like to be in the workforce. Um, I mean, I've been in, you know, I, was, I started like working when I was 16 like for actual companies, right? Not just like the little corner shop or something small, mom and dad or something like that. But prior to that, you know, like I was working um, in our own, like um, in our own um, mom and dad's um, like dairy, right? They were like a pie shop, you know, kind of thing, uh, bakery. And so, you know, it's like, so I, you know, you get used to customers, you get used to people and stuff and you learn that everybody's different. 
but it's it's but if you're going for a job right you you know and especially in this whole called influential brand marketing you know before it was just like models right uh promotions uh now it's influencer right so you've got this whole um you might have like a hundred thousand people following you because they just think you look nice nothing to do with what you say or anything like that or or might be somebody might be following you because they like what you do like you know like those exercise videos and makeup videos and all that stuff or or you know or whatever you talk about but that whole culture of influencing and influencer is like just so weird for me it's like you know there's only like one percent is ever gonna like make it out there in the world and so this lady basically goes well i didn't get it therefore it's because i'm black or because of my race and so now then she goes then she puts uses uh, her you know whoever it's out there on TikTok, whatever it is uh, um to put her, the company that's actually hiring other people that actually gave other people jobs on blast and it's like this is you know it's like call to action you know this is such and such you know and so now you should boycott that and such and such and it's got nothing to do with it apart from the fact that they she they just didn't like probably liked her attitude they just probably saw her video and you know a branding and stuff and then they had a look at who this person was and they just thought oh well that's not going to fit out you know fit out you know our brand we don't think that she would work and had nothing to do with blood, as they imagine had nothing to do with hogan because hogan's not the one who makes the decision right it's basically his up from um you know if at that level it's like the promotion company the advertising company dealing with the branding company right so it's like marketing company it's all that level it's like you know the last thing hogan's going to talk about is like oh okay i think it's okay but it's like this whole previous like this whole previous story of like hulk hogan being a racist and all that which you know came out about a you know decade or so ago back but to be honest i think everybody's racist to a certain point right i i've you know it doesn't matter everybody is a racist to a certain point it's like you know it's like saying all you know everybody has a bit of hate for somebody else and that you know some other race in their in their system because of whatever how they're raised that little um, bit of um interaction they had that like got out of control and so they took on it's because only of because of this race and that's why it's because i was this because of that and they so they they carry that through their life and um until right until they meet someone from that same race who's who is different right who's nicer kinder person and is, is loving and caring and then they, oh shit i thought all these bad things about you people and now i'm like thinking and it's the same thing here, right? So like, oh, because of him, him and now we're, you know, it's because of his racism and all that, that's why it's picked up. The problem here is like, when you're a 20 year old or a teenager, whatever you're putting out on line is there forever. And the sad part of this is that none of these uh, so-called influencers or these, you know, TikTokers and all that realize that, you know, that they like, um, that, you know, that you're, um, this is out there forever that your new boss uh your future boss and their work you know and your work uh, you know their workers will see this someday and they'll go i look i don't really wanna that that is true yeah i get that right so nathan's saying if you get, get sick though you're at least doing an explanation i and i agree with that as well like why did i get fired right it's like um for this or that so you can better yourself but then like what if she did get an explanation but she wasn't happy with right it's like sometimes you go, and the other thing she's like i've never felt this way before you know i've never been through this before it's like it kind of makes me think that she's never been told no right or never been fired or never let been let go from her work right so she's like that um that alpha you know the generation which is now coming up the alpha generation which has been which has never been told no and they get they get um you know they get given uh, whatever they want um and nobody tells them no and it kind of feels like um maybe 
you know, she's got that. And then, of course, what Nathaniel was saying, you know, she, she deserves explanation. I mean, I've walked off jobs and I haven't given an explanation because, like, I just felt like, yeah, you know, not to the boss. I've just said, I can't deal with this because, you know, uh, the way, I guess, just the environment isn't, you know, isn't a great environment. But the other thing is, like, maybe somebody else, she said somebody, something to somebody, uh, and the management got wind of it. And they're like, rather than making it a big deal about, hey, this is why you got fired, and, you know, HR is calling you for this, just go, okay, look, you know, you went for the job, you didn't get it, but we, we've got this other people replacing you. I mean, you're doing the job, going through with the job, right? And um, I don't know if, um, the one thing I, you know, I, I keep thinking about these things is like, these videos are here forever, right? Um, these little, even if you deleted the Wayback Machine so-called, you know, you can find oh, what you're saying and your future bosses, this is why it's something I think is, you gotta be careful about what you do online. Like I try not to be online, you know, doing live streams unless I'm in the right scope of mind, you know, because if I'm feeling, you know, angry or something about something, and if I go online, I'll be from a whole lot of crap, which, you know, could be misdrewed and could get out, you know, uh, could come across as being, you know, hateful or whatever. It, it could ruin my future endeavors or whatever. And I think a lot of people are not seeing that as that. And so you see a lot of like, um, you know, people ruining their futures because of just that moment of being online and doing that. And um, and then later on, just because I've done that, it's like, oh, it's because I was drunk. It's because I was, you know, I was taking this drug or that drug. And so, you know, on medication. But I, you know, I was thinking about this and I was thinking, man, I just got to, you know, I got to be careful when I'm online and so on, because even though I'm 50, right, it's not not going to be working for anybody in the future or something like that, because I work for myself. But even with that, people could take anything you say out of context and it's been done over and over again anyway. But actually putting out a video uh, blasting some company because you didn't, didn't get a job, that's also going to give ammo for other companies to go, well, I don't think I want to work with that person. I don't think we want to deal with that sort of behavior in our workplace. If we fire her for whatever reason, maybe she comes in here and starts, you know, um, saying stuff that we don't agree with or going out there and we fire her. Now she's going to go online and she's going to start talking about how bad we treated her and because, you know, and sort of use racism as a thing, as a backdrop. But the one thing I really found interesting was when she says, I, you know, let me just put this part here again, right? Where she says, um, oh, oh, I'm going to be a person now, right? Disparities in our pay recognition is a broader <laughs> issue here because I later I was contracted to promote real American beer with no reason as to why. Yeah. Starting on the second and ending on the sixth. But after my first day of work on the second, my contract was abruptly canceled with no reason as to why. Which is so weird because I later discovered that the events were not canceled and I was actually replaced by a whole new group of brain ambassadors. Which kind of makes me feel like now, this is the first time that I have ever yeah. experienced it's such treatment in this industry, and I just want to know why. Why was my contract canceled? Now, this situation yeah, this is, is very is unfortunate, but I believe that it highlights a broader issue here with minority influencers, content creators, and brain ambassadors all across the world. We often encounter disparities in our pay, recognition for our contribution, and what is the reasoning as to why? Lack of communication and fairness in this instance is a huge reminder of the challenges that we continue to face in this industry. And for those who have sent kind messages and responses to my previous video, Look, I appreciate the overwhelming. So she's using this l losing a job. And the reason, like, if somebody fires you um, after hiring you and then they choose to go with somebody else. It felt, it sounds to me like she did something to upset the cop, right? Whatever, you know, or said something and the bosses heard about it, or they found that, that maybe looked into her, like, into, um, 
her online presence, right? Which is what we're talking about here, right? Your online presence. If so they, maybe she, they looked into her online presence. What, what is her behavior like on TikTok? Is this the person we want to work with or future? She could have just went, you know, um, so, hey, oh, I didn't get the job. So is there any other jobs? That's it. And that's, you know, it was like, okay, so like I've been through this myself, right? Uh, you know, spent friggin' an hour with like a, a job um, broker, right? And I said, listen, like, I'm, you know, I'm looking to, I'm, you know, I'm looking for another, you know, another job. Same field. So we go in and have like coffee and stuff and talk about it. We'll go through, you know, friggin' like, um, maybe, I think maybe like, Five freaking other jobs are available with my um, uh, level of um, what would you call it? like uh, experience, right? Like senior experience. Like I've been in this business for like say seven, eight years, right? At this point, um, and so uh, is there like is there a job that's where I can get this job and it will give me the money that I want and it'll be where I want to move to, and then it'll also be in the dates, you know, um, kind of like. Um, It'll give me the um, uh, the right working time, right? Like, um, so it was like um, Tuesday to Saturday, which meant like, like I would get a Saturday, which would mean like a lot of people would come in on that Saturday, you know, because people work nine to five, uh, Monday to Friday, but on then on Saturday they would go into the, you know, go and spend their money, right? Have you know, gotten the checks and stuff. So I'll be like, hey. I'll do a Tuesday to Saturday, uh, you know, shift. And so we'd sit there going through with us and he'll get, he'll get his pay from the, you know, he'll get his pay from, uh, you know, the firm that hires him, right? The workplace that hires them to be, be a work job broker. Right. And so I, I can see what, you know, I remember this like about maybe 2007. Yeah. 2000 is like so far back. We sit there, have a coffee, and he's going through his list. Goes, oh, this is there, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's too far away from where I am. Okay, next one. All right, um, this looks good. So, what are they? I think, oh, assistant manager job. Okay, all right, okay, let's let's go for that one. All right, that's going to actually get me to um, get upskilled. It'll like you go in as a sales, but they're going to train you up to be assistant manager twice, right? And then you walk in there. And you find out like they're not really going to give you the assistant manager job. They're just using you to get you in there to get your skills, right? And it happened to me twice. And so I could go, oh no, you know, it's because I'm an Indian because you know all this. Nothing to do with it. The fact was that they wanted to make sure they and they got um they got me in to do the good job without giving me the uh, position. So I left. After a month, I was like, yo, okay, nah, I'm gonna. I need a new one. Went back to my broker and said, hey, look, man, this is what they said. There's I've been around them for a month. There's no way, you know, I've learned everything. I like I learned how to, you know, everything I needed to think in this place is just not gonna do it for me. And so, you know, learned how to be a friggin' uh, um forklift driver as well. You know, never done that before. And so thought, you know, hey, show me half an hour how to do that. Now I've got a new skill. Right. And then so after that, another job. You know, I was like, okay, let's go do this other job. And um, and then I found, and then I was, you know, getting set up and that's when I had my car accident, right? And then started like, okay, that's not, can't stand up. That was it. That was the end of my um, career in anything because uh, even in filmmaking, right? Because I couldn't stand up for more than three hours. And that was like, even like yesterday, I was walking around for like two hours and my heels were like, I felt. I said to my friend, I was like, it feels like like my, um, you know, you got. So this is the bottom of your feet, right? Your heels, right? And the bones coming up, and it feels like a bone is crunching against that soft, you know, part, you know, part of your um, heel. I'm like both the legs. I'm like, dude, I just, it's yeah. And so I got home, and I was like in so much pain, and like I, I was in pain and like that, and I was like, okay, that's it, but. One thing it's like, you know, there's like, I remember my sister, right, who's very light skinned compared to me because she's half Indian, half, um, half English, right, European. And she was in a meeting and they basically, there was a guy there with scholarships. And he said, if you look like me, like a bit kind of lighter skinned than me, then follow me later. And my sister's like, what do you mean? It's like, 
I've got scholarships for everybody that's got a like you know my kind of skin color. And I was just like, you know, I guess that cuts me out. And yet she's you know she doesn't have money. She's gonna have to like go and get a loan. She's not, not never gonna get access to scholarships. And yet she'll be one of the ones that like has now been, I don't know, about like twenty years, like having gotten loan to do that job. And she's at a high level and whatever without even having and this is what i was talking about earlier about struggling right like even though she's on the same level as everybody else that came to financially she didn't get access to scholarships to help her get uh, you know uh get more equipment she had to pay for everything right and yet she's on this economic level she's on exactly the same as everybody there and yet because her skin color was lighter she couldn't get access to that you know it's like me it's like i had to like basically get like um i couldn't get access to like pacific island grants because i spent all my life in new zealand yet i'm a pacific islander and then after that when i look when when i faced that i was like yeah you know what it's not even worth bothering going for you know and um it's just it's it's it gets to a point where you just go there's there's no way these doors will ever get open to you you just might as well just work hard at yourself to do it uh and so it's funny how like you know she now she's gonna i'm gonna be you know active as influencer it's like people really don't like to be honest people really don't care for activist influencers you know yeah it'll get you the clout online crowd and so on but really when it comes down to it it only you know it only goes so far you know and it's kind of weird that like um we got into a stage where like you know everybody wants to like if they get they feel like they're slighted now they want to speak for everybody else rather than just going you know what i'm just going to move on and find a, a, another pla a place to work somewhere i can you know uh, i fit in where they, they like me for who i am or i'll, or I'll work hard at, at my you know on myself and be better at um you know learn from this experience and go and you know be um work harder you know and hopefully you know where the new place i go to will help me you know get the money i want the experience i want and learn that but um i think it's it's gone to a point where nobody wants to understand that whatever you put online is going to be used against you uh, by your future employers right if they you see you as a troublemaker they will stay as far away from you as possible and um and the safest place to be um to be to not go through that is to work for yourself right create create a um a thing for yourself and where you are like um you know you're the boss or you're working in a team that where you have a more say in and um you know it, and it's not always going to be easy i'm like hell you know um but surround yourself with talent so surround yourself with people who are different because doing that it'll teach you that like people are all the same right people are all the same and they all have the same desires and you know uh, they have the same concerns about life they want to have a better life they want to have a better job they want to provide for their family they want to provide for themselves uh and you know secure a future for themselves and a lot of people you know bosses here's the thing about employers right they don't have a lot of time right they do not like you think like oh because they're they're, they're bosses now they um you know they have all the time in the world to deal with stuff they don't because most of the time their brains are concentrating on how do i make this uh, this business survive how do i pay for the bills that are going to arrive next month or whatever right i'm in the same position right now i'm like okay i gotta make sure i manage whatever you know i have right now to pay for whatever i gotta pay for that artist or that person or that person oh yeah the bills are gonna arrive in about you know next month on this day let's make sure i scatter it i don't have the time with dealing with like personal things with people because like it's like okay you know however uh and and to think of that right so I'm just me working on comic books. Think of someone who's like in a position that they've got to manage like that thing, like a huge brand, like a beer company, right? 
and uh, and now you're out there. Not only are you blasting the, you know, someone who's got their name attached to it, but you're blasting, um, you know, your own brand company, like the one that's given that's going to give you opportunities, and you're ruining the opportunities of others. You know, right? It's something like we talked about earlier about Peter Dinklage, right? With Snow White, like he's like, you know, we don't want to see. You know, we don't want to uh, be misrepresented by having these seven dwarfs in like, uh, you know, little people in Snow White. And then like um, Hornswoggle, right? I can't remember his name because I'm just known as Hornswoggle, right? Comes down and goes, hey, um, now you're stopping seven of us getting jobs and becoming iconic characters who kids can look up to and treat us like normal people, right? And um, and it's just such a shame because, admit, like, I, I just miss the, um, you know, as a kid who grew up, right, watching Snow White, reading the Snow White books and stuff like that, you know, to, to finally see, you know, the perfect uh, representation of little people that could be, you know, like, that's what I mean. Like, when you get to see people, you know, they say, oh, we got to have representation. That's true representation, right? at least everybody who's, I mean, I don't know any Western child who has not read um, Snow White, right? Or knows who Snow White is. And then you get little people getting represented that way. You know, it was just, I, I just look, I was looking forward to it, but then, you know, they wanted to, you know, re-represent somebody else as a Snow White character who was in Snow White.